Hello and welcome to a special edition of Eco How all about hedgehogs. In a previous episode, we learned about the decline of the hedgehog numbers in the UK. Today, we're going to learn what we can do to help by making our gardens more hedgehog friendly. Let's find out what we can do. We can help out hedgehogs in our gardens by providing access, food and shelter. We'll start with access. On a typical night, hedgehogs can travel one to two kilometers in search of food, but garden fences disrupt travel. An easy thing to do would be to cut a small hole, 13 by 13 centimeters, in the bottom of your fence. Once you've created your hedgehog highway, be sure to log on to hedgehogstreet.org to record its location as part of a big citizen science project. Hedgehogs can easily fall into ponds. Although they are good swimmers, they can't keep it up forever and will need a way out. A ramp of some kind is perfect, but make sure the surface provides some sort of grip, for example, by cutting grooves into the wood. Alternatively, build up a gently sloping pile of rocks within the pond. Now, onto food. It's best to provide hedgehogs with a natural source of food, and their diet consists of beetles, caterpillars, and earthworms. There are several easy ways to attract these invertebrates to your garden. Basically, don't be too tidy. Leave a small area to grow wild, create a log pile, and keep a small mound of leaf litter. Not only will these habitats be great for invertebrates, but they could also provide shelter and nesting habitats for the hedgehogs. If you are having a tidy up in your garden, be sure to check any areas of long vegetation before wading in with a strimmer, just to make sure there's no sheltering hedgehogs in the line of fire. Even in a tidy garden, planting a variety of nectar-rich flowers and native shrubs will attract a variety of invertebrates. So, you've provided some natural food for hedgehogs, but maybe you'd like a closer look at these incredible creatures by setting up a feeding station. I spoke to hedgehog expert Dr. Tony Burnell, who we met in a previous episode, for some advice. Water, more important in the summer than food actually, but I would obviously encourage people to put food out. Um, so a shallow, heavy dish that they can't tip over for the water. Um, Food-wise, dried mealworms are brilliant and dried cat biscuits and you can put them in like um, an upside down plastic cat basket. We put a brick on the top and a brick in the entrance so a cat can't come in and rake all the food out because they're very good at that. <laughs> and birds won't go in as readily. That's a really good thing. And if you put dried food, you don't have to go washing the dishes every day. Now let's look at shelter. If you've already got a log pile or a wild area, chances are hedgehogs will be able to make their own shelter within that habitat. However, you might want to make a specific hedgehog home. Rather than buying an expensive one from a shop, you can make your own by placing a paving slab over four bricks and putting some hay into the shelter. Ideally, it should be situated out of direct sunlight in a sheltered area. One type of shelter that's bad news is a wood pile destined to become a bonfire. Therefore, it's extremely important that you move the pile to a new site before lighting it so you don't harm hedgehogs. If this is impractical, only light the pile from one side, hopefully giving any creatures within a chance to escape from the other side. Finally, a quick word about the use of chemicals in your garden. Don't. The wild area we mentioned previously will hopefully harbor natural pest controllers such as ladybirds. Pesticides will kill off invertebrates and therefore deprive hedgehogs of food. Also, avoid slug pellets as they are simply another way of introducing poisons into the food chain. I asked hedgehog expert Dr. Tony Bunnell what to do if you find what looks like a sick or injured hedgehog. The best thing to do is to phone the main line for the RSPCA which is 0300 1234999 and an inspector will come and collect the hedgehog and if it needs to go to a vet they'll take it to a vet. That concludes this special edition of Eco How. Look out for upcoming editions of Eco How, covering what we've discussed here in more detail. Don't worry, if you don't have a garden, you can always try approaching your local park authorities and convince them to give hedgehogs a helping hand. Good luck, and be sure to let us know how you get on. Until next time.